Hi, I'm Christy Simpson with ChristySimpson.net, and I would like to show you how to crochet a chevron afghan. I used Sweet Roll by Premier Yarns, and it's a really awesome yarn to use for this blanket. It is a self-striping yarn, and all it does is it works from one color to the next. It is wound up in this cute little um, yarn cake, and it's really easy to use because you can just work off the outside or the inside. I used a K 6.5 millimeter, which also allows it to be a looser blanket and not so tight. So you can work this up in just a few sittings. I actually worked pretty consistently and I got it done in five days. So just grab your yarn and your hook and let's get started. started the pattern says to chain 216 but so that we can get started fast and you can see how the repeats work I'm just going to chain 88 well I have already done that so we can get started here so what we're going to do is two double crochet in the fourth hook fourth chain from the hook so turn over and let's work in these back bars so that our finished edge here will look the same as our final row so Let's see, one, two, three, four. And we will place two double crochet here. And then we will double crochet 10. And 10 will be the base in between the increases and the decreases. This makes six. Seven. Eight. Nine and ten. In the next section here, we're going to double crochet three together. So yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch. Yarn over and pull back through. Yarn over, pull through the first two loops. Now yarn over, push through the next stitch, yarn over, pull back through. You should have four loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through the first two. And then we're gonna do it again. Yarn over, push through, yarn over, pull back through yarn over, pull through the first two. Now that we have done the three, we're going to pull them together. So you've taken three stitches and made them into one. So you're going to do this two times. So yarn over, push through, yarn over, pull back through, yarn over, pull through the first two. And then we will do that two more times. with four loops on your hook, yarn over, pull all the way through. Now we have done this, double crochet three together twice. Now double crochet 10. One, two, three, four. Get some more yarn here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10. Now in the next two stitches you will place three double crochet. So three double crochet in one and three double crochet in the next. Let me show you. So one, two, and three. All in that same stitch. And then in the next one we'll do the same thing. One, two, Three. Now let's do this next double crochet 10 together and then I'll show you what the decreases and the increases will do within this pattern. 
and help you understand why we're repeating between the two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now let's look at our work. Okay. Lay it out flat here. Now when you do the, in, let's start with the decreases. When you do the decreases, it brings it in this direction. When you do the increases, it's going to increase. So if you look at your pattern here, let's see if I can turn it the same way, yeah. When you do your decreases, now I have it the wrong way. When you do your decreases and your increases, these are the decreases, and whether I'm holding this up or down, it doesn't matter. All I'm trying to show you is that each one has the same effect. So up and down, up and down, and if you did just decreases, it would not give you the chevron or the up and down effect. So that's why we're repeating from the decreases to increases. So now that we've done the, the double crochet 10, the last section was the increase, so now we're going to do the decrease. So let's decrease over the next three. So one, two, and three. Yarn over and pull back through. And again, one, two, three. And again, just to show you, it's now going to take and make it go up. So then we double crochet 10, and I'll show you the increase one more time, and then I'll let you finish this row, and then join me back. This makes five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now three in the next two stitches. So in the same stitch, let's put three double crochet. So one, two, three, and in this next chain here, we do three. One, two, three. Now to take a look again, this is the increase, this is the decrease, and this is the increase. So finish your row and then join me back at the end. The last stitch should have three double crochet. Okay, we have made it to the last stitch here, and it is just one three double crochet in the end. We don't have three double crochet and three double crochet in the next because we're wanting to create the edge. Now on the edge, it is the end of one of these peaks or valleys, whichever way you hold it, it'll de determine how, what you call it, but it will allow it to angle upwards, so it will not be flat. It will look like it's going up, so don't be concerned if it looks like it's at an angle as you're crocheting. Now we will chain three, one, two, three, and turn your work, and the heavier it gets, the harder it, it is to turn, but it's a lot of fun to see your work progressing. Now you will put two double crochet in the same stitch here, which is your first stitch. So then you have three double crochet in your first stitch, just like you had three in the last. And then you will double crochet 10 times. But, I got a little ahead of myself. We will be working in the back loop only. 
And the reason we're going to do this is because it will give you a nice ridge. And let me show you what I mean. If you look closely, you can see that the ridges here, the loops, create a little texture design. You don't have to do this, but it does add texture to one side. Now, if you leave it under both loops, it will just be a smooth blanket. But I like, a, I like a little bit of movement with it, so I'm going to work in the back loop only. Now, the back loop only is always the one on the back side. No matter which way you're turning, if it's right side or wrong side, you will always look to the back and this will always be the front. So then let's double crochet 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now we are at the spot where it had the decreases before. We're going to decrease one, two, three over those three and then decrease one, two, three over the next three. So yarn over and it's the same thing. We're just working in the back loop only. Working in the next three stitches. and then pull through all of those loops. Yarn over. Now I really do love working with this sweet roll because it changes the colors for you, like I said in the intro. Okay, that's two right there. There we go. So there's our two decreases. Now double crochet 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now your decreases and your increases will always line up or else your chevrons will look funny and crooked. So if you'll really just take a look here, on the first set of increases that we did, there's one, two, three. On the third one and the first one for the next set, that is where your increases will be because that will be in the center of those increases on those two stitches, the last one and the first one. And it will always line up. Whenever you're doing the decreases, it will always be one, two, three, one, two, three, using the um, decrease stitches on each of them. So it will always line up on your decreases and increases. So let's do our three double crochet. One, two, three. One, two, Three. Now let's double crochet ten. One, two, three, well, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now we're ready to do the decreases again. And like I said last time, it'll be one, two, three, and where you did one of the decreases, that will be one of your stitches in the decrease. And then the next one will start the other decrease. So they should always line up. If they don't, you need to kind of start your row again and just check your counts. And that's one way I know if I've got 10 double crochet. Sometimes when I was working up the blanket, I would 
just not be paying attention and I would have eight and my decreases wouldn't line up or maybe I forgot to do one of the increases and so it would just give me a visual of where I was. So we've done one decrease, so let's do the other. Okay, and if you look at what we have here, we have the same peaks and valleys of the chevron, and since we're working in the back loop only, you do have this um, front loop that is still unworked, which gives you a ridge and the texture within the blanket. So go ahead and finish this row and join me back for the third row and I'll show you how the working in the front loop adds to the texture. As you can see, at the end of this row two, we also have a three double crochet in this last stitch. And I worked in the back loop only of all of the stitches to give us that ridge. Now the cool thing is, with this pattern, as you turn, and it's the same for each row except for on that row we worked in the back loop only and on this one we will work on the front loop. When you work on the front loop, say we put three double crochet here and I'll do a few of the double crochet. I'm sorry, we don't need three. We need two because that first chain three is your first stitch. Um, whenever you do a couple more stitches working in the front loop and remember I said the stitch loop closest to you is always the front. The one away from you is the back. So I am just working in this front loop only. Okay, let's look. When you work in the front loop only, it will allow the same side to have the ridge. So on this row, it may be the back, and this one's the front. Back, front, back, front, or vice versa. All of the ridges are on the same side, and it will leave the other side smooth. So, it, like I said, it just gives you texture. So, what we did was a chain three and two double crochet in the first one, and then we will double crochet ten again, and I will show you how this lines up. And as you can see, my color has changed with this sweet roll. And it makes it so easy to do because then you don't have to cut your yarn and you don't have to join it in and then weave all the ends in. And if you want to, that's fine. That's up to you. But I like that the color changes are, um, they go from one to the next and they're long stripes. They're not really short. So it gives you the effect that you purposely striped it, but you really didn't. Okay, let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine. Let's make sure I did that right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There we go. I knew it was looking funny because I was getting to my decreases. I knew I was counting wrong. So we have our ten double crochets here in the front loop, and then you work your decrease in that front loop three of them together. And then three more together. And the pattern for each row is the same except for you're working in the back loop and then front loop, back loop and then front loop. So you can finish this row and you can get started on your own chevron blanket. I hope you love the chevron pattern as much as I do. And didn't the sweet roll yarn make this chevron pattern so quick and easy to make? I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and that you'll join me back here for more free crochet patterns. <music>